All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to my FX Buddies, the podcast. And I say podcast because there's also a blog, which is my FX Buddies podcast blogspot.com. Yes, blogspot, not, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and then if you want a print out, a transcript, you can go to rss.com and it's my FX buddies there also. And um, what's the other thing? Spotify.com has the video. Um, so I don't know. I'm thinking maybe eventually they'll say hey by the way we can upload this video to youtube but for now it's just the audio that they send over oh and hey youtube uh anything that i show or talk about on display is covered under the fair use disclaimer act um so what was i going to say if you listen on youtube there's the I think it's below somewhere you look and it says show more. And if you click the show more, there's a link there to the corresponding blog post, which then you can follow along. You know, if you're on a device that looks, sees, displays, whatever. Um, and then you can follow along and you can see the articles for yourself because you know maybe you're like me doubting you know <laughs> and you want to see it for yourself and i don't blame you anyway this is pretty interesting so we'll just get into it i think i did oh subscribe join whatever look for that button because i don't post regularly so when i do you know, if technology works like it's supposed to, you'll be updated. All right. Um, so the title of this was what? I can't see it. I think it's this. So it is Saturday, November 11th. It's very early. This will be posted. Uh, it was extremely quiet on Friday until late. And well, it was Saturday for them, but it's still Friday for us, right? This. Um, article came out and this was um very interesting okay so i but i think this so the articles are out of order right i just try as i may i just am not organized <laughs> but anyway okay so let's see this is the big news today okay so i think it goes back to thursday all right so thursday it was announced um, that, matter of fact, I think that's at the bottom. Well, wait, wait, wait. I was trying to find the title of this. I guess I did go with, oh, come on. A reading of the central bank's decision to allow importing the dollar what does it mean and how and it wasn't even it wasn't even importing the dollar it was foreign currencies other currencies that they're going to import but anyway so that's just the title um okay so now just i don't know if we talked about this maybe we did briefly it's the second to the last article i think they announced five points the uh, cbi announced five points to importing physical foreign currency right i don't know if you saw that nope that's not where it is okay i'll keep going up but i'll explain it to you in case you didn't listen to the other oh matter of fact i wanted to put one of these Oh, I can't do it right now. One of these images is supposed to be up here. Okay, let's see. 
I know I put it here. What is that? Maybe I didn't. Because I think it is on the previous. It's on the previous um blog. But so they put in five um points uh, agreements. I forget the word they used, but they had to come to the airport. They had to come through the airport. They had to register the serial numbers. Um, it's only certain currencies, which I don't think they listed all of them. Um, yeah. Oh, I put it in. Okay. So it is here, but it's under this article called titled whatever fear of creating new speculators after a central bank action related to importing foreign exchange foreign currency i really like that picture i think that's the picture i'm going to use anyway so they did that and um not even 24 hours later <laughs> of course they have to be registered companies you know all these things right the five points are here if you want to but my first thought was okay they're coming through the airport they're bringing probably pallets of money right um and whoever is manning the <laughs> manning the post is gonna say oh you're here with that money what you know it's my lunch time so Go on and handle that and just walk away and let them register the money they want to register. Don't register the money they don't want to register. So it, I can see room for corruption. Uh, you know, that's just me, though. Uh, they'll probably be totally honest and enter every bill, every serial number of every note. That seems like a lot of work. Anyway, so... Um, they have to prove they have their licenses and all of that. Okay, so that was interesting. And remember, some people were like, oh, that means it's going international and they have to change the rate. And I was like, mm -mm -mm. they're just doing that for the people, the foreign people that are going to be there doing business in that money. So they'll have their money there, right? Okay, so someone else had the same idea that i had and there were multiple complaints fear of creating new speculators right so speculators are the ones that are making the dollar prices go up so what's to keep them so right now they have a parallel or you know black market for dollars once they start bringing in these other currencies who's to say they won't do the same thing to those currencies right okay and so there was a couple of those people complaining so i presume what they put out today was to counteract the people complaining there's even a economist who comes on tv a lot economic concerns about the central bank allowing the import a foreign currency and here's his name Nabil Marsumi uh, commented on the central bank's decision to allow Iraqi banks so the money's not going to the CBI it's going to banks individual banks and at this time we didn't know which banks but now we do we know some of them at least okay um this measure also raises big question marks about the source of the funds transferred from abroad is it from the money of private banks and their wealth abroad or through financing through the platform so even he's like well hey because and that was one of my first probably second thought too is well are they going to be allowed to bring dollars in are these other countries going to be allowed to bring dollars in well then that would be going around the system that they're using now right going through the u.s treasury and the federal reserve 
So it even it even says that here too. Okay, so today, oh wait, this came out next. And this is very interesting, and I really, really think you should read it. I know it's boring, but it just, um, it's an, this is a point I've never seen. So this is something new, right? I'm not saying that we're going to the bank this week. But this is definitely forward movement. This is major forward movement. And, you know, you might want to read about it. So, a reading of the central bank's decision, importing the dollar, what does it mean and how? So, it's this goes back to Wednesday. This came out. The decision was topped by some recalling the decision of the council in 2011. So they had this plan to bring foreign currencies in way back in 2011. And it was, it's a law. It's in the Gazette. And in Iraq's news, the actual article has the actual, a copy of the Gazette in Arabic, right? So they could read it. Well, I don't read Arabic. So... They already had it in English. And you can see here, look how they start their legal documents. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Love it. But anyway, so yeah, it's long. But they have Article 40, Laws 2010. Um, here's a law from 2004. So they already had this plan. Now I don't I don't think I was um I definitely know I was not following articles this closely in 2011. I don't even know if I had currency in 2011 cuz I I have lost track of time. There's some years that are missing, but anyway, um so the aim of this permit and this authorization is to reduce the pressure on requests for foreign currency through the foreign currency auction currently taking place at the bank and to encourage banks to provide banking services. So see, they were dealing with this in 2011. So that means there was a pause in this part of the monetary reform and it's not on pause anymore, right? And so all the people... Because like that economist, Nabil, whatever, he may not be, he may not know that. There's a lot of young, you know, mid-30s people who weren't paying attention to this. So I think it's really great that they put this for education for the citizens, right? So they even talk about anti-money laundering. They had an office called Anti-Money Laundering Office. So that was that. So they put that there like, here's how, you know, when it was approved and how it's okay constitutionally, right? Among other questions, in what currency will Iraqi banks buy or import the dollar from banks outside the country? Is it in the Iraqi dinar or in other currencies? It is basically correct for the Iraqi dinar to be circulated outside the country. That's what we're waiting for, right? Which will lead to a reduction in the monetary supply inside the country. So then it, it has, you know, some other questions. But so, yeah, so there it is. They're talking about circulating the dinner outside of the country. That's beautiful. All right. Um, what else? So I think that will catch us up to where we are today. What is this one? Yes. So the big news for today. The first headline I saw was the central bank agrees with the American side 
to enhance the advanced balance of five Iraqi banks. Actually, it said euros. It said euros, but here, look, it, it was already changed. So I clicked on that. It came up 404, you know, not found. So then I had to go around to different sites trying to find it. I went back to the first link that I found and cop. I was like, well, I'm going to copy this title because they do that. Sometimes they'll put a headline. I should say headline. And then you click there and the article is gone. Sometimes if you go back, the article is there, but they've made changes. And that's what happened. So then they changed the headline to reveals the outcomes of the meeting of the central bank and the American side. And a government source revealed today, Saturday, that the central bank of Iraq agreed with the American side to enhance the advanced balance of five Iraqi banks in dollars. But whose dollars? Jordanian banks, right? And so this is one. So the transfer is um, via JP Morgan. So I don't know if you guys remember, but when the day that they announced the JP Morgan, I was like, yes, this is big. JP Morgan is there to do dollar processing for them. It was big. And so now we're finding out other parts of that, right? There were also other meetings that brought together one of the Emirati banks to implement the mechanism for enhancing balances in the Durham, right? The Emirati Durham, indicating things are going well in this aspect as all the technical details related to it have been resolved. What? And what are technical details? Details that could hold things up, right? In this regard, it is it is expected that the mechanism for enhancing balances in UAE Durham will begin within the next few days. Now, some people think the mechanism is a new rate. I would love for that to be true. But you have to wonder, there has to be a rate. I mean, and it could be 1320. I, in fact, I think it says in here 1320 um but there has to be a rate for them to be converting or exchanging right so that's that's two now right the jordanian jordanian dinar the uae durham he stressed that there are serious negotiations that have reached their final stages to enhance the balances of some Iraqi banks in euros. See? So there's euros with UBAF bank, whatever that is. <laughs> when I see AF, I think Air Force, right? But I don't know. I doubt it's that because to finance trade with the European Union, noting an increase in the number of banks whose balances in Chinese yuan are being enhanced through the Singapore Development Bank. So that means the CBI has already, and, and I do remember Singapore, this UBAF bank just recently happened. Um, so the CBI is already connected, or these these banks may even have branches in Iraq. I know we know the Jordan Bank is there, right? But it's called the National Bank or something like that. So it's quite likely these banks have branches in Iraq and either we forgot about it or they just haven't told us. All right. So and remember way earlier in the year, I want to say maybe six months ago, they said, hey, you know, we're going to start doing something you know it didn't say tra transactions maybe trading i don't know what but they were going to start dealing in these and then it listed yuan jordan and then it said and others so that you know it could be 40 different and eventually it, it probably will because 
I don't see anything about Korean money. And there's lots of Korean countries in Iraq doing building and energy, uh, uh, engineering. So, yeah, so this is just the beginning. Okay, so he added, accounts have been opened for six Iraqi banks in this bank. And during the com coming period, seven more banks will be added to finance Iraqi trade and imports from China, as these are about to be $12 billion annually. So this is big. And wait, there's more because we didn't talk about the rupee, right? Yeah. So the last paragraph. The source concluded saying bank accounts have also begun to be opened in the Indian rupee for a number of Iraqi banks at the same correspondent, the Singapore Development Bank, but the New Delhi branch, New Delhi, New, New Delhi, New Delhi, that's in India, right? And operations to enhance the balance of two Iraqi banks have actually been completed as a first stage and it is expected that this mechanism will contribute to financing Iraq's imports from India, especially medicines and foodstuffs, which are estimated at about three billion dollars. Okay, so this is one article talking about this. This is everywhere in their news. Now, I haven't been watching, well, I've been watching Curtis News because I've been trying to um, catch something. <laughs> Ooh, a snow leopard. Yeah, so see, I don't be lying when I'm telling you I've been watching late TV. But anyway, <laughs> so, all right, let's go back. I wanted to show you. Okay, so this was sent to me. This is for people who are listening. This is from the Kurdistan Regional Government. It's Twitter. I say Twitter because I don't know what X represents. I still say Twitter. This post was dated November 10th, 2023. You can see right here. It's from the Kurdistan Government. It's on their Twitter page. Oh, wait. What was that? Oh, no. Okay, it's an ATM machine and a woman goes up. She puts a debit card in, I believe, and she takes out two 50,000 dinar notes. Okay, so um, there's words here. I translated them, but it doesn't make sense. Um, it says, this is what you need to know about this document. But my computer does not like the Kurdish language for some reason. It doesn't, it doesn't translate well. Like, oh my gosh, I'm showing my name there. You can see that. Knock on it. Oh well. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, and then look at her bracelet. Isn't that bracelet beautiful? I blew it up. It's really pretty. Anyway, um, I made it larger so you could see the different stones in it. So clearly, this person has money, right? That she has on a gold ring, a gold bracelet, then a other bracelet with some kind of stuff on it. Um, gems. I guess they're called gems. Anyway, and it just keeps replaying over and over. But that's it. There's no other words. There's nothing with this post. So I did get one response that perhaps it's old. But why would they repost November 10th, 2023? Why would they repost an old thing, an old video about the ATM? I don't know. All right. So and then this, I just thought this was interesting. IFA. Federal Investigation Agency. This is out of... Oh, it's blocked by the little thingy there. Karachi. Karachi. Uh, FIA arrests three suspects involved in illegal currency exchange business. So they were caught in... 
Karachi. Three people, and they had Omani Real, which a lot of them do, Canadian dollars. I thought that was interesting. They had Canadian dollars, but not U.S. dollars. <laughs> um, Iranian Real. Rarely, I read a lot of these reports because I I, I always want to see if they're going to say they had a Rocky Dinar. Rarely does that happen. But rarely do I see Iranian Real. And they actually had not much, right? Oh, wait, 10 million. Sorry, I was thinking it was this number here. 10 million Iranian Real. Mm. So, yeah, and then they had UAE Durham. So it's, I just thought that was interesting, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So we're pretty much done. It's Saturday, so we don't need to check the rate because it's the same. Even though the Google has been bouncing around from 1309 to 1305. So I'm like, okay, who's trading? Um, Then, oh, I need to sneeze. Okay, so there's one other article about, I put the main article about the new um, currencies that they're going to bring in. And then here in Bahrain's news, they had an article, Iraq is moving to support its assets with the Chinese Yuan to finance imports amounting to $12 billion, it says dollars, annually. Now, wouldn't it be neat if, what if they still, like now they have to do, okay, you want oil? Well, the price of oil is this many dollars, so you have to get dollars. So what if they're doing their conversion in dollars still? And, no, I don't know, because this is definitely going to be a hit to the dollar, not not um, instantly, but that, that's what we want. We want Iraq to get off the dollar, so we can't complain, right? And here, so they, they talk about the same thing. JP Morgan Bank is going to be doing the transfers, right? Uh, and so, yeah, so Bahrain is what is running this article. So very interesting. Like I said, it's big, big news today in their news. They definitely want the citizens to see that. Um, okay, so we're almost done here. So I think Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, there was an article about... Um, coins here it is not possible to mint an iraqi coin currently and inflation is a thousand times high so now even though they say coin but but here in the picture they have a gold coin which is a hundred i think it's 100 dinar coin but that's what they used to use they're not using it now this is older um the issue of importing the dollar is not new. It was approved in 2010 by a measure, blah, blah, blah. Here. Um, whoever this person is talking, Shakely, of Shakely stressed that the central bank will not be an intermediary in importing the dollar, but rather the banks that have relations with foreign banks and rely on their stock of the dollar. So see, that money's not, it's not going to the CBI and then to the banks. It's going from the airport to the banks, which to me is scary, but that's how they worked it out. So <laughs> that's how I'm going to go, at least for now. Right? Um, it says the U.S. Federal Reserve. So this is another part of the article I wanted you to hear. The U.S. Federal Reserve does not delay remittances, but it audits them and for international standards for money laundering. So that's what the holdup is. They're saying, we're not really trying to delay your transactions. We just have to audit them, right? Um, and Iraq has inflation in the dinar, which is more than a thousand. I don't know a thousand what. It doesn't say. And it is not possible to print coins at the present time. And the first time I read that, I said, ah, oh, this kind of feels like that a moment where... Kuwait said, no, no, we're not going to 
raise our value and then they did right <laughs> so i kind of feel like even though they're adamant they, they can't afford it it's not possible we're gonna see these coins soon right that's what i think the iraqi citizen must be educated to use the visa card so forget cash forget coins use your card <sighs> okay um the anti-money laundering so this came out i can't remember what day Thursday. Determined on Thursday the amount of cash a traveler is allowed to bring in and out of Iraq. Now why do I have this here? It hasn't changed, but it seems like in the past, every time they were about to revalue, they posted these so people could see them because there's people, you know, there's people that travel. There's people with money and they travel. So I thought all of this happening at the same time is very interesting all right what is this and then also put this in another little interesting thing the minister of finance minister yeah the minister of finance has announced the the finance ministry will be working seven days a week till the end of the year and they will be working on the budget so maybe you know they're getting it ready adding up you know taking out pennies putting in dollars whatever right who knows maybe adjusting the rate getting ready for the new year i don't know but it's just interesting all right we already covered this article now this and this is the last thing i'm going to talk about this i find very interesting um Caribbean passports. Dominica welcomes the Barzani family. Who's that family? The Kurds. That's right. The Barzanis are one of the ruling families. And the former governor of the CBI. And when you read this further, it tells you Aliyah Locke. Also, the current CBI governor has a dominican passport also hmm so um i'm over 30 minutes i i was trying to make this short but y'all know me <laughs> so maybe i'll talk about this but they even talk about so in 2017 the previous um cbi governor i forget what his name it was like terror terrible or something his name translates to something not very nice now this is well i don't know maybe when the other sites see it um shoot well i'm gonna put the link because it's not um, it's not in the regular Iraqi news. So, um, oh, well, I always put the link, but some people say, well, I don't see the link. Um, but anyway, so yes, it, it has a history. Um, it's just, I'm like, wow. Oh, anyway, okay, I was going to read this part. This came after... The deterioration of the Iraqi currency's exchange rate compared to the dollar and demands from the Parliamentary Integrity Committee, which collected signatures to end his appointment. So that was for Ghalib Mukif. He has one other name. So when he got fired from the CBI, he was like, I need to go somewhere. They're going to try to arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> but um Sadani's name is here for some reason too. Oh, they're saying that he's the one that removed him. But so the, it's there's a lot here and I just found this like a few hours ago. Um so I have to read more. So I'll probably talk about this again on the next one, but maybe it'll hit Denarland, maybe it won't. Um on the other hand, 
deputy whoever filed a legal complaint against both Mustafa Ghalib and the current governor Ali Mustain al Alak due to the loss and depletion of millions of dollars specifically regarding forged import documents so part of why they are doing this article is there's a part in here where they say well we've requested some documents but we haven't gotten them yet so yeah this is very interesting and i know not everyone's gonna read it but i i find it uh, interesting so um it is actually veterans day today here in america um and it's also the birthday of the marines so you know i love america and i just had to point it out and i think every veteran every person and the families who give their lives i mean not they're not dying you know we thank them too but <laughs> when you join the military man it is like you just wouldn't believe but anyway so thanks for listening sorry oh we went really long but this is really this is some stuff we haven't seen before it really is well maybe they saw it in 2011 okay i haven't seen before and like i said there's all these things coming together at the same time very interesting all right so enjoy your day thank you for listening um what do i say accumulate while we wait for the rate to appreciate don't don't miss any mails and pay all your bills <laughs> all right until next time